Hey, Meher, check your voice. So today's session is uh, today's session is about how to win at content marketing, right? And it's um, it's a masterclass geared towards um, aspiring content marketers or those content marketers in the early days of their career who want to step up their game, right? So we're going to talk a little bit about what content marketing is and some basic concepts, and then we're going to jump to um, um, uh, jump to the do's and don'ts of content marketing, uh, the importance of buyer personas, and tracking and measuring your success. Uh, then we're going to uh, cover a few content marketing trends uh, for 2023. And then lastly, how to uh, kickstart your content marketing career, right? So what is content marketing? If you're in the session, you've probably heard of this term before. Um, but you, you may not know the definition of it. So when we talk about content marketing, we're specifically talking about a strategic marketing approach that is focused on creating and distributing valuable, relevant, and consistent content, right? So the, the content has to be valuable. It has to um, uh, solve a problem or answer questions for your audience. It should not be um, uh, content just for pure entertainment. Uh, Namra, can uh, can you see my um, uh, can you see my screen? Yes, so we can okay. see your screen. Right. Okay, okay, great. Um, right. So, so the content has to be valuable. It has to be relevant, also, right? If you're you're let's say you're publishing an article about you know uh, five ways to uh, to win at content marketing, and you're you're promoting it to an audience that doesn't. That, that, that's not interested in content marketing to begin with, then it's not relevant, right? So it has to be relevant content and you have to publish your content consistently. Um, and that's what's going to make your content um, useful over time to different, uh, different people in your target market, right? If you're just going to publish something once and stop right there, then there's no point in, in, in content marketing, right? You, you have to keep publishing over time and distributing that content. You have to publish and distribute, right? Um, so consistent content to attract and retain a clearly defined audience, right? So you have to attract, that is uh, acquire, and then retain a defined audience, that's your target market, right? to drive profitable customer action. So profitable customer action in simple words would mean um, uh, getting customers to pay for your product or service or upgrade to a, a paid plan if they're on a free plan, right? Or uh, get them to, uh, or upsell any new products or services to them that, that they would find useful, right? So. So you want to be able to do that through your content, right? It's not uh, not like you know writing a story, and or publishing something you know on a on an entertainment blog. That is not content marketing. The goal of content marketing essentially is to acquire and retain customers so that you can make profits, right? Um, now, um, there's a very important concept in in content marketing that is called uh, the buyer's journey, right? Um, it's also called the content marketing funnel and um, HubSpot uses the term content marketing funnel. Um, if you Google either terms, you will essentially see the same, uh, same results. Um, so the buyer's journey or the content marketing funnel is a process by which the target audience or the buyer converts into customers, right? Um, and there are three stages. The first is the awareness stage where the buyer identifies a problem, right? The buyer identifies that there's a problem and it needs a solution. And at this point, the buyer then starts looking for a solution to the problem, right? Second stage is the consideration stage where the buyer has come across some solutions and is weighing options, right? And one of 
one of those one of those options is your product or service or your market offering in simple um, words i'm sorry to interrupt meher but i think your screen is stuck on the first slide okay uh, i have moved to the second slide um i'm not sure uh if can you can you see the second slide now the buyer's journey no i you could maybe disconnect and connect it again right the screen share option right yes we can see it now you can turn to slide show Okay, perfect. We can see it perfectly now. Thank you. Um, Mehe, your mic is muted. Right. Am I audible right now? Yes. Okay, great. Right. Um, so coming back to the buyer's journey, um, we were at the consideration consideration stage um, where the buyer weighs options and one of those options is your, your marketing offering, market offering, right? Um, Namra, am I audible? Yes, you're audible and we can see your screen as well. Okay, great. Right. So the third stage is the decision stage where the buyer chooses your offering as a solution, right? And for, for different reasons, a buyer may choose your offering because maybe it's cheaper than the other ones, or maybe there are more uh, features available in your product, or maybe um, it's more convenient for them to avail of your service. Maybe your turnaround time or processing timeline is much quicker. Um, various reasons, right? The buyer chooses you and then becomes a customer, right? Now, um, how, what does this buyer's journey or this content marketing funnel have to do with content, right? So every stage of the buyer journey requires certain types of content, right? And um, while there are many types of content out there that you can publish and distribute, um, there are certain types which are good for each stage and not, not that good for other stages of the buyer's journey, right? So um, the awareness stage it, it, in, in content marketing terms is uh, called the top of the funnel, right? So here you publish top of funnel content or tofu content, right? And this sort of content uh, includes blog posts, uh, infographics, uh, podcasts, social media posts, and web pages. Um, some blog, blog posts, so, so your blog posts don't necessarily have to uh, talk about promoting your, your product. It can um, be a topic like, um, you know, what is, uh, what is the best um, um, email marketing software um, out there, right? Or something like that, right? It can answer the uh, what is questions or how to questions. Um, then infographics are visuals, right? Visuals with certain data points in them, right? They can, there can be infographics with, uh, let's say five data points or 10, uh, maybe 15 even. Um, they're essentially illustrations or visuals, right? That, that provide certain information. 
right? Hence the term infographics, information in a graphical form, right? And you have podcasts. I'm sure you know some of you, if not all of you, have listened to podcasts before. They're very popular these days. Uh, a lot of marketers have their own podcasts. Uh, a lot of brands have their own podcasts where you can uh, tune in and listen to uh, listen to um, uh, guest speakers or or experts or just people talking about certain topics, right? And social media posts. Um, these I think we all are familiar with. And then you have web pages. So web pages would be something like, you know, in the awareness stage, uh, a web page uh, commonly visited would be the home page of your website, right? Uh, when when your the buyer starts looking for a solution, the buyer goes online and Google searches um, different solutions to, to the problem at hand, right? And, and may come across your website in the searches and then uh, is redirected to the home page. So the home page could be a kind of web page in the awareness stage. And in the, the consideration stage, you publish uh, middle of funnel content, right? Or MoFu content, right? Here you have um, eBooks and eGuides. These are uh, in PDF form and usually um, uh, available either after you sign up uh, to a newsletter or you provide your uh, contact information to a brand, right? You, essentially, your email address, right? So they, and, and this content can sometimes be gated. Gated means that it's not available to everyone. It's only available to those, uh, those uh, um, prospects who, um, who become leads, right? Who provide their information to the brand um, and then, uh, the brand has their contact information and then they have uh, they can communicate with each other right um and there are white papers which are slightly more technical and more detailed types of content um you have templates and toolkits so if you ever go on a marketing blog like hubspot blog uh, it's a very popular content marketing um marketing blog where you can uh, download free templates and toolkits for different things uh, such as, you know, content calendar templates and social media uh, plan templates, etc. Um, and these are very handy, handy tools that you can avail of for free, right? So once you're in the middle of the funnel, right, you're, you're considering, um, uh, a, 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 your audience is considering your brand or you, right? Um, you're providing them with useful tools or useful, um, useful resources that would, um, increase the, their likelihood of becoming your customer, right? Because they'll think, okay, this is this is really useful and it's free. Hey, why don't I choose this brand over over other ones, right? Then there are quizzes and assessments that some some brands like to uh, like to um, um, publish on their websites, where they'll ask if their 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 target audience a few questions, you know, to diagnose their problems or help them choose the right solution, uh, assuming that they have a range of solutions available, right? Then, then uh, these quizzes and assessments will help help the audience choose the right one depending on their needs, right? Then there are webinars, which are uh, online seminars, basically, right? Um, I'm sure some, if not all of you have attended webinars before. Sometimes these webinars can be free. Other times you have to pay for them. Um, and these days webinars, because you know, in the post COVID world have become very popular, right? More and more um, brands have moved to, um, uh, to webinars because they see you know, much, more, um, much more value in it uh, as opposed to having an in-person seminar um, and this way they're able to to um, uh, reach a much wider audience in different locations right um, and the good thing about webinars is that that they can be recorded and published and shared right then you have newsletters which are basically email marketing campaigns uh, if you've ever signed up for a newsletter with a brand uh, it could be any brand that you've purchased something from uh, uh, online through their website um, you will receive a promotional email from them 
let's say maybe for a new product launch or a, a sale or discounts, etc. So those are newsletters, right? And um, uh, middle of funnel, um, uh, because in the middle of the funnel, you you as assuming you are the brand or you are the the content marketer, you would have the uh, the, the the audience's email addresses. You can send newsletters out to them, right? And you have bottom of funnel content in which a very popular uh, and very useful um, type of content is a customer testimonial, right? So you, you get your customers either to, uh, to testify or talk about your, your product or service in, in either through a video, or you can even publish um, those testimonials in written form. Um, if you've ever been on a website that sells products, you'll see customer reviews, you know, in a slider somewhere, maybe on the home page or somewhere on the website, maybe on the product page somewhere. Um, E-commerce businesses uh, usually use customer reviews to uh, convince um, convince uh, their their audiences to buy their products, right? Um, and this is uh, and this is not just limited. Testimonies are not limited to e-commerce. So you'll find uh, you know, SaaS companies also use customer testimonials. Uh, tech companies also do so. Uh, service providers do so. So any any business that sells will uh, find a content um, a customer testimonial useful. Then you have case studies. Case studies are basically. Um, 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 they talk about how a brand has helped a customer, right? Or how the brand's offering has helped the customer uh, solve its problem, right? So case studies are usually longer than blog posts, but uh, they are very, very, very useful in convincing your, your target audience to convert. Uh, and you have comparison pages where you're comparing uh, your brand to, uh, to alternatives, Right. If you ever go on to a, a SaaS company, let's say if you've heard of Mailchimp, Mailchimp is a popular email marketing tool. If you ever go on the Mailchimp website, uh, you you may come across um, uh, Mailchimp uh, versus uh, Send in Blue or you know other email marketing tools. Uh, a comparison. There'll be a bunch of different features listed there, and you know tick marks and crosses uh, will indicate which. Uh, feature each brand has. Um, so uh, these are very, uh, very powerful uh, in helping helping your audience decide whether to choose your brand or not. And pricing pages, uh, of course, you know, in the decision stage, the buyer really uh, uh, thinks about price, right? And a lot of uh, most, if not all buyers will uh, consider price an important factor in deciding whether to choose a brand or not. Right, then you have FAQ pages, uh, frequently asked questions, right, where common, commonly uh, raised questions uh, by customers or, or um, uh, your target audience are answered, right? Um, and then you have newsletters, which I've already described earlier, right? So these are just some of the different types of content that you can publish in each stage of the buyer's journey, right? And it's very important that you, you, you publish content in each stage, right? For each stage, right? You don't want to limit your content to just one stage, right? Because then uh, you're, you're not really converting. For example, if you're, uh, you're only publishing content for uh, top of funnel content, then you're not really helping those leads, nurture those leads into customers, right? They're not going to progress to the next stage that's the consideration stage right so 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 your goal ultimately is to acquire customers here right and you want to do that by publishing content in each stage of the content marketing funnel right now uh, now that we've described content marketing, uh, I'm not going to go into too much detail about content marketing and what it has to do with SEO, et cetera, because that's beyond the scope of this, um, this session. But what we are going to talk about are very important uh, do's and don'ts of content marketing, which, um, which not a lot of people know when they're starting out in the, the, as content marketers, right? So one of the biggest do's 
is that you should plan your content, right? You can't be publishing content, you know, on a whim. Um, it's like shooting arrows in the dark, right? You can't be doing that. You have to plan out your content, make a content calendar. You will find content, content calendar templates online. They're easily available uh, and downloadable. Um, so plan it, plan, plan out what you're going to publish when, uh, what day, what time, what the topic is going to be, right? You need to then, then do plan out, you know, what, uh, what you're going to write in under that, uh, that topic, do your keyword research, et cetera, goes into it. So that's the SEO part of it. So you have to do all this planning in advance, right? You can't be sitting on the day that you're publishing your article, the, on the day you want to publish it, you can't be sitting down to do keyword research. Then you have to do all of this planning in advance, right? And that will then make you make it much easier for you to to um, to, to publish things in a timely manner. Uh, and you also then make sure that there's no overlap. Once you have an entire plan, you know that um, uh, you 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 won't you won't be there will be no overlap in the sense that you won't be repeating the same content in again and again, right? Um, the next important do so you should always ask critical questions. Okay, so these questions can come from you know maybe your own experience. They can come from um, uh, the feedback you get from your customers. Um, or any questions that it, they ask, those questions then can then be used to, to, to publish content, or you can answer those questions in the form of content, right? Or then you can talk to uh, field experts, right? Or maybe stakeholders you're working with um, and ask them pressing questions about, about uh, uh, topics that you want to publish on, right? Um, so asking these questions will give you insights from different perspectives, from different points of view that you may not come up with, you may not see, right? Uh, and it's very important uh, in this uh, uh, to, 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 to understand your customers' pain points, right? Uh, understand your market, uh, your, your, your target market, right? And where they're coming from, what their problems are, right? Um, the next biggest do is that you have to set measurable goals, right? Uh, when you're publishing content, for example, you're publishing a, a top of funnel article um, to promote your, uh, to, 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 to build brand awareness, right? And to bring traffic to your website, you know, your new brand, uh, and you want to do that, right? So uh, you have to be able to measure, measure the success of your efforts, right? Uh, there's no point in doing all the work and then not knowing whether it's working or not, right? Because some, sometimes uh, what you, whatever efforts you make uh, can work and other efforts may not work, right? Uh, so you want to see what's working and what's not working. And you, you do that by setting measurable goals and then measuring, measuring your efforts, right? Then, uh, like I mentioned earlier, you want to distribute content for each stage of the buyer's journey, right? Make sure that, and there should be an even distribution across each of these uh, three stages that I uh, talked about earlier, right? The awareness consideration decision stages, right? And then, um, so, so very important, very important thing, and the, something that a lot of content marketers don't do is engage with their blog visitors, right? So if you've ever been on a blog or if you've ever written for a blog, then you'll see that um, some blogs will have um, a comment section underneath right at the end of the blog post, right? Uh, and that is where website visitors can leave comments, right? And these visitors do not have to be members or they don't have to be signed up to your brand. They can be an, anyone that, that visits the blog 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 post right um now when they drop a comment it could be those comments could be uh, they could be uh, um, gold mines for uh, for new customers right so you want to make sure that you interact 
with, with the, your blog visitors. Anyone who comments under a blog, blog post, right, yeah, should be replied to. I think someone's mic is unmuted. Okay. Um, uh, can I request everyone to keep their mics muted, please? Um, thank you. Right. So now that we've covered the do's, there are some don'ts. Okay. And these are not all the don'ts, but these are some very important don'ts that you need to make sure that you follow when you're starting out in content marketing. Right. So you don't want to make it all about your offering. Right. When you're publishing content, especially if it's top of funnel, you don't want to be, uh, you know, tooting your own horn and talking about your brand all the time, right? Because at that point in time, your your target audience is looking for a solution. They're, they're not thinking about brands at that point in time. They're thinking about a solution to the problem, right? And you should be able to help them, uh, help them by answering the questions they may have, right? Um, so, when you talk about your brand all the time, you know, it kind of, it can put your, your audience off and then they may think, okay, this brand is being too salesy and we don't want to uh, buy from this brand. You know, they're pushing us to buy from them and, and uh, some, some, some audiences, some, some leads or some customers will think that, that that's the being forceful and, and that's negative marketing. So they then want to go and buy from another brand, right? So you want to make sure that you don't do that, okay? What you can do and should do is, is answer the question at hand or write about the topic and present your product or service as a solution right at the end of the article, okay? And that's what a lot of smart content marketers do, you know, when they're writing articles, okay? Now, the next thing... And this is something that a lot of, this is a big mistake that a lot of um, um, aspiring or, or um, content marketers or young content marketers do is that they wait for inspiration to publish an article or whichever content they want to, uh, form of content they want to publish. They wait for inspiration. So in content marketing, your uh, topics um, must not stem from just your own inspiration. These topics must stem from your data, right? What does your data tell you? What, what questions are your customers asking? What is your audience talking about, right? That is where you draw your ideas for your, your articles from. Um, you can go on to a community forums such as um, um, a Reddit, Right, or you can go on to Facebook groups and LinkedIn groups and see what your target audience is talking about, right? What the, their trending topics uh, are, right? What the popular problems are um, in, in your niche, right? And draw inspiration from there. And that research needs to be done on a regular basis, okay? Um, next is to don't ever expect short-term results, right? Mm -hmm. Content marketing is, a, is an organic form of marketing, okay? You're not putting money into it. You're not advertising your blog posts or anything like that. You, it's organic. And organic growth is always lower than, than paid, paid growth, right? So you have to wait, let's say, you know, a quarter or six months to see, um, see uh, any significant um, uh, results, right, from your efforts. Um, and you want to be able to do month on month comparisons to see, okay, whether whether your efforts are working or not, right? Um, then you, you, you don't want to write for everyone, okay? You want to write for your target audience only, right? Um, otherwise, if you're writing for everyone, then there's no difference between your 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 content and then a uh, content uh, by uh, just an, you know any any other writer okay so write for for a, a clearly defined audience okay and most importantly don't forget a call to action right whenever you're writing an article a blog post 
you want to put a call to action in it um, at the end of the article. Okay. For example, uh, if you're a, uh, you're you're marketing for a SaaS company, right? You want to you want leads to book a demo, or if that article is for your existing customers, then you want them them to maybe upgrade to a paid plan, okay? Or you want your leads to contact you. So contact us is a popular a popular call to action, right? And these calls, calls to action are usually um, appear in the form of buttons or hyperlinked text, okay? Or anchor text, right? Um, so if you don't have a call to action in your article, then what's going to happen is your, your audience is going to read the article and close the window and that lead will not convert, okay? So very important to put a CTA in your content, okay? And not just in blog posts, even in, in, in social media posts, right? You want a call to action to be there, right? Like, like book a demo, for example, if you're, you're posting about, um, about a new product, a SaaS product you've launched, right? You want to put a book, book a demo, um, call to action with maybe a link to, to your contact form on your website or your calendar or somewhere where they can go and uh, your audience can go and book demos, right? So you want to put that link over there in, in your post as well, okay? Um, <clears throat> Right, so that covers our do's and don'ts. Now, um, another very important concept in content marketing and in marketing in general is the buyer persona, okay? Now, uh, what is a buyer persona? A buyer persona is a fictitious character that represents your ideal customer, okay? So you think about, uh, think of it this way. If let's talk about Linkstar, okay? So if, if Linkstar, you ask yourself this question, if Linkstar was a person, what would he or she be like, right? So the answer to that question is my uh, Someone's mic is unmuted. Right. Um, so uh, a brand that caters to different market segments, right? So, so many brands segment their target market um, by either by age or, or location or gender or other characteristics, right? Um, so when, when there are their market segments or customer segments, then you want to have a, a, a multiple buyer personas, one for each segment, okay? Um, now, why do brands need buyer personas, right? They need buyer personas because um, to, to understand their target, target audiences better, okay? Their prospects, their leads, and their customers, okay? Uh, to understand them better. And then once they understand, they, they have a buyer persona, they understand their, their target audience better, they're able to tailor messaging around the, the pain points of behaviors, habits, and preferences of, of their audience, right? That this whole process becomes a lot easier, right? If they didn't have a buyer persona, they would not know um, who they're targeting, right? Or, you know, what the pain points of their target audience um, uh, are, right? Or what they li their likes and dislikes are, their preferences, or, you know, what their lifestyles are, are like, or what habits, et cetera. Um, so very important from this point of view. Now, um, many brands, when they start out, right? Startups especially, um, will not have buyer personas when they start marketing, right? So it's very important, you know, whether you're working for a startup or, or a, a more established business that's been around for more than, let's say five years, because a, a startups, a startup usually 
uh, is a startup for five years and once they cross five years, then they become um, they, they, they become established businesses, right? So um, coming back to the point, whether you're working for a startup or an, a, an SME or a, a large corporate or an MNC, you want to make sure that your the buyer persona is defined, okay? Right, now, um, tracking and measuring success. Now, how do you know whether your content marketing efforts are working or not? You have to measure them, right? And you measure them by defining success metrics for your content. So it's important that this is the content that you're publishing and promoting, right? You're creating it, you're publishing it, and you're promoting it or distributing it, okay? So for example, for blog posts, a good metric would be page views. For social media posts, you have um, uh, not links, it's likes, sorry, there's a typing error here. Uh, likes, comments, and shares. For newsletters, it's email open rates, and for web pages, it's uh, website traffic, right? So um, now where do you get all this information or this data from? You pull these numbers from, the, from different data sources. So, uh, for blog posts, um, you'll use Google Analytics. For web pages, also you'll use Google Analytics. For social media posts, you will see, uh, let's say if we're talking about Instagram, then you'll see Instagram insights of your page. Um, if you're, you're, you're using LinkedIn, posting there, then uh, LinkedIn will also provide you with uh, analytics or insights for your posts, right? If you have, once you have um, uh, your page admin, then you can see insights for every post you publish, right? So how many likes, how many shares, how many comments, etc. All of that data is available to you in, it, in LinkedIn. And the same with Facebook, okay? And newsletters. So when you roll out newsletters, you use a, an email marketing tool, right? So MailChimp is a very popular one. There's also MailMunch, there's SendInBlue, there are many others, right? All of them have built in dashboards, right? Where you can view data, right? How many newsletters you've sent out, which one, uh, what was the open rate of each email marketing campaign? Um, how many people did you send it to, et cetera? All this data is available. So, so email open rates um, tell, will tell you that out of the, the audience, the total audience you sent in a campaign to, um, what percentage opened that newsletter or that that email, right? So that is your open rate. Um, website traffic is a metric that you can uh, you can find in Google Analytics, but for this to happen, for this to work, Google Analytics needs to be set up. It has to be up and running for your website, okay? Um, and these are just some examples, right? There are other tools you can use to, um, uh, uh, depending on what, what metric you're measuring, there are other tools, but G Google Analytics is one of the most popular tools that content marketers use. It's the holy grail of content marketing tools, right? It provides you with a lot of deep insights into the kind of content you're publishing. It, and, and so the page views is just one of them, traffic is one of them. There are many other metrics you can find there to, to measure the success of your content marketing efforts, okay? Now, um, let's come to uh, trends. So content marketing trends for 2023. While there are many, there are three that are very popular these days, right? Uh, artificial intelligence is one of them. It's taken the internet by storm. Um, chat GPT is being talked about all over the internet. Uh, on LinkedIn, you will find a lot, if you search the hashtag chat, GPT, you will find a lot of marketers talking about it. Some uh, are in favor of it, others are not. But uh, essentially, artificial intelligence is being used to help content marketers generate um, generate content quicker, right? But um, so a, a disclaimer, a very important disclaimer here is that when you're using AI tools like Chat GPT to generate content. Uh, you want to make sure that 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 you're using it for content that does not involve any algorithms, 
for example, um, blog posts, right? So the algorithms, Google uses algorithms to uh, gauge whether your content is good or bad, right? And uh, when when uh, chat GPT will generate, you know, similar content for different marketers or different users, right? So if you're going to be publishing uh, content that's generated by an AI tool, then Google will immediately know that it's, uh, Google has a way of identifying that this content is very robotic. It's plain and boring. It's been published by other marketers out there. Um, so it, it, it's not valuable or good content and it shouldn't rank, right? So you want to make sure that you, okay, fine for newsletters, you know, you could use um, uh, AI tools to generate content. You can use them to generate um, captions for social media posts, et cetera, but uh, not, it's never recommended for articles, okay? So then um, number two is short form immersive videos. Immersive means that the user um, experiences the video almost as if, as if it is first time. So virtual reality or VR, right? These sorts of videos are very popular these days. Uh, VR is, um, um, it is very popular. I'm sure some of you have even uh, used a, a, a experienced VR first hand. Um, so short form as uh, means that that um, uh, these videos are, are are short in duration. Okay. Um, then you have live videos. So Instagram lives; those are very popular these days. Um, and ever since uh, COVID uh, COVID hit the world, um, Instagram lives have become very popular. And and now you see um, literally every brand you follow on Instagram. Uh, doing some sort of a live session, um, especially if they're brands that <coughs> that offer services or if they're uh, people or um, they can be marketer, content marketers with Instagram pages. They can be uh, professionals with their own pers uh, their their own um, uh, Instagram accounts, right? So th they'll do uh, whether it's doctors, marketers, you name it. Um, they do Instagram lives and they'll even invite guests or other people to join their live sessions, right? Um, live streaming also is another, an, another way of, um, um, of doing live videos. Um, live streaming could be on different platforms, Facebook, pay, live streaming. Um, hmm. So, Someone's mic is unmuted. I'm not sure whose it is. Um, right. So, yeah, that covers trends. Um, but I would urge you to go and look up, uh, search on Google what other trends are popular uh, for 2023 and, and keep in mind that trends keep changing. What's trending now may not be trending three months later or six months later. So it's important that you, um, you, you follow industry experts, right? Follow um, popular content marketing influencers, right? Um, uh, sign up to different content marketing blogs. HubSpot is a good one. Subscribe to their newsletter so that you are, you are updated on what's trending in content marketing, right? Now, the very last, very last and important, um, important part of this session is tips for you to kickstart your content marketing career, right? So these are just some of the tips that I myself, you know, found to be useful and learned on my own. No, there was nobody to guide me. I learned all of this on my own and learned it over time. Um, but you have all of this listed in front of you, which is great. Um, so the first important thing is to, to have make a shareable portfolio, right? So a portfolio of, uh, if you haven't done any projects, then a portfolio of work samples. So write sample articles, right? Just so that uh, your, 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 uh, your leads or, or any prospective clients know they can gauge the quality of your work and they know what kind of uh, writing style you, you adopt. 
um, and make sure that there's diversity in your portfolio. So you want to have some case studies, some articles, long form, and then some short form. Um, if you're doing copywriting, that's different to content marketing or content. Uh, but if you want to do copywriting, then you can throw that into your portfolio as well. Um, but essentially, you need to have all, all your work in uh, either a shareable Google Drive folder, if you use Google, or Dropbox, or some sort of a cloud cloud uh, uh, storage uh, tool, right, uh, where you can share your content with people. Okay, and make sure that your content is all in, in uh, it's a, a view only, so that nobody can edit it and uh, uh, put up PDF documents instead of Word or editable files, okay? Um, Number two is uh, do content marketing uh, courses, right? So HubSpot Academy has a really good content marketing course. It's very beginner friendly and it's free. Uh, if you go on to the, uh, just Google HubSpot content marketing course and it'll come up in the searches on the first page, okay? So HubSpot Academy is the online uh, learning platform of HubSpot. Um, you'll find it uh, in the Google searches, okay? Um, and do this course because it, so once you do this course, because it's very easy to understand, then you can do other more um, more difficult or advanced courses. Uh, you can do the Ahrefs course that is paid, I believe. But if you have the funds for it, um, it's a good investment. Ahrefs is more geared towards SEO, but SEO and content go hand, content marketing go hand in hand. So if you, you've done a couple of SEO courses, you've done a couple of content marketing courses, then you can you can very easily uh, uh, very easily do content marketing on your own, right? Uh, you'll know the basics, okay? Um, number three is to start with small projects, okay? I know when you when you're in aspiring to pursue a career, you you dream of doing big things, right? But remember that there there's a lot of competition out there, okay? And there are there are many many content marketers out there who've been in the field for many years and they do a great job. So they are the ones that uh, that clients will go to for bigger projects, right? But if you want to get your foot in the door, start off small. OK, you can and charge less than uh, your competition to begin with. Right. Um, if let's say your, your competition is charging five thousand rupees, park rupees for one article, you want to charge maybe three and a half thousand or three thousand rupees. Start a small charge less so that you can get get clients quicker uh, and get more clients um, uh, than uh, than you would if you were charging a higher price or a market compatible rate. OK, and, and you don't have to just work with with the clients in in your country. You can work with clients in different countries. OK, and and um, if English is is your first language, then um, English content is always, always in demand. But if you want to write content in another language, right, maybe it could be German, Spanish, you name it. There's uh, you can do content marketing in whichever language um, you choose. OK. But again, start off small. Build your personal brand, that's number four. So how do you do that? You need to have your LinkedIn profile, you need to have a work email address, and very important is to have uh, your LinkStar profile uh, updated, okay? So all of you who are participating today, all of you have LinkStar profiles, but some of you may have left out some, some sections. So it's important that you update every section and make sure that your information is accurate, okay? So once you have your personal landing page ready, your link star ready and updated, then um, uh, essentially you can start sharing it with, with your clients, with your network, LinkedIn networks, with, on your, with your WhatsApp groups, et cetera, with wherever, whichever uh, mediums you want to share on, okay? But uh, having all your information there means that that you won't have to receive queries about okay what's your pricing or or um, what's your email address or you know all that information will be there on your link star okay so make sure that you you build your personal brand okay now I'm not saying that you have to build create a logo for yourself no you don't 
but having a personal brand means that you should stand out from your competition okay right and uh, when you have a personal brand as a content marketer then you also want to have a certain writing style okay and uh, also be able to adopt different writing styles or different language styles okay depending on what your client needs okay so that's that's also going to set you apart from your your competition right that that will make your personal brand stronger and uh, set your pricing beforehand okay um sometimes you know um uh, uh, very beginner level content marketers or content writers right when they're they're uh, approached by by clients prospective clients then they're asked for their charges and at that point in time they don't know how much they're supposed to charge so they'll tell the client okay you know let me get back to you i'll do my research and get back to you with a quote no don't do that because then by the time you get back to them they'll probably have chosen someone else to do their work for them okay so make sure that your pricing is defined beforehand and it should be pricing that's um, if you're new in the field then pricing that's a little below below your competition okay so that your client is more likely to choose you especially especially if the client is is, is on a budget okay um and this will save time in converting that lead into a a client or a customer right and leverage on your linkedin networks okay linkedin is a really really good platform if you want to build your professional network okay uh, start following influencers content marketing influencers marketing influencers uh, founders of startups etc because in and so at least in the pakistan in pakistan startup space you will find that um, or south asia you will find that um, that content um, uh, the content game is becoming stronger and stronger and more and more content marketers are in demand right um, so follow um, look up you can google search um, um who the top content marketing influencers are out there uh, i can give you a couple of names uh, one is ross hudgens um uh he is uh, the founder of siege media which is what the biggest and and the best content marketing agency in the us okay so uh, ross hudgens uh, you can follow him uh, Ra um Rand Fishkin he founded Moz which is a, a very popular SEO SEO tool um uh you can follow Neil Patel Neil Patel is uh, is the founder of um I believe uh Backlinko if I'm not wrong and he has a Neil Patel blog um that's his blog uh he publishes very useful content and seo content marketing and seo related um related um, articles right so um follow follow these content marketing influencers um or if you know the names of content marketing platforms like hubspot search uh, just go on google and search okay the ceo of hubspot and then uh, find that person on linkedin and follow him or her right um that's a good way to find out who you know who the industry leaders are behind big names in 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 content marketing right so connect with with follow follow influencers connect with different people so people could be prospective clients like startup founders right uh if you're looking for a full time job in content marketing uh, connect with um with marketing managers and ceos or co-founders of different startups um uh startups especially those in the tech tech and saas spaces uh, are very very content heavy in their approach right so they're always looking for content strategists content writers content marketers um so connect with them on a, on a regular basis okay and keep expanding your network right this way whenever there a job comes up or a gig comes up freelance work comes up then uh, you are informed through your linkedin feed right um <clears throat> and make sure that that you also um once you connect with these people you engage with their posts okay so comment on whatever they posted like their posts comment on them so that they know that you exist okay uh, because they're connected with so many other people um for them to 
to to to for, for you to be top of mind for them right and then for them to be most likely to choose you for their uh, for the the when it comes to let's say hiring hiring or or hiring on a freelance or full time basis then you you become a, an option for them okay leverage on your linkedin networks another thing that you can do on, with your linkedin network is sign up to newsletters okay uh, there are many uh, many great content marketers out there who write newsletters okay so once you connect with them um uh, you sh- if they have a newsletter you will probably receive an invite to to sign up to their newsletter um or they may send an invite to you and other connections so be sure to sign up to them uh you'll find some really useful information there right so that covers our tips and 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 tips to kick start your content marketing career um um do we have any questions we have half an hour for q and a uh, the session ends at 9:30 so well 26 minute minutes to be exact So let's open the floor to questions. Um uh I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Um you all can take your time. Uh you can put your question in the chat if if you don't want to unmute yourself. uh hi mehe i had a question that is brand persona and target audience the same thing right that's a very good question so no your target audience um is the entire market that you're 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 catering to okay right but your your buyer persona is it's like a, is a fictitious character that describes your uh, your 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 ideal customer or your target market okay All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, hi, Meher. Um, I had a question, but first of all, I would like to say, I mean, this was definitely an amazing session. So yes, it was really, really helpful. Um, so thank you for that, and thank you for sharing such valuable, valuable information. Um, secondly, I would, I would like to know, um, like, how can content marketing help address our like? target or audiences i mean how do we connect with them and uh, yeah right so that's a very good question so so how do you connect or, or how do you get your your target audience to 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 read your content right so seo plays a big role there right so when you're when you're writing articles you're going to be do, there there's keyword research that goes into it right so you're going to use tools like ahrefs and semrush and moz to do your keyword research and use those keywords in your content right and these keywords uh, are those that that your your audience is searching for um at that moment right and they need to essentially be uh, high uh, keywords with high search volume that means that that um that uh, these keywords are being googled very frequently by your target audience so once you use these keywords in your articles and you publish them on your blog um then those then your audience the audience that's searching for those keywords will then find your article in the the, the search results right so there's seo plays a big role there right and then uh, there's also um promoting this con- your content on your social media pages that that way you can get your audience to 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 connect with your um content right to engage with it uh you can send out uh your you know every time you publish blog blog posts you can send them out on a weekly basis let's say to uh, to to your newsletter subscribers okay um so so that's how you you distribute or promote your content okay does it answer Makes your sense. question Yeah, yeah, it does. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Okay, so Fatma BB has a question. How can we receive payments from international clients as we don't have PayPal in Pakistan? 
So right. uh, hmm. Fadma, just to tell you that Linkstar also now has payment uh, integration, international payment integration. And uh, Meher can also give you some insights about this. Right. Thank you, Namra. Yes. So, so the, it's great that Linkstar is now facilitating us to, to accept payments from international clients. I think that's very, very useful. So um, another, another option that you have is um, Payoneer. Uh, I'm not sure if you've ever heard of Payoneer, but Payoneer is, it's, is a great, um, uh, it's a great tool that you can use to accept international payments, right? Uh, even if you don't have a bank account and or you don't have a PayPal account, you can use Payoneer, whether you're in Pakistan or any other country. I think most countries in uh, Payoneer is accepted, right? Um, uh, other than that, um, uh, you can use a bank transfer. So, so, I'm, uh, so certain countries or certain banks may have restrictions on how much money you can accept or um, how much money your client can send to you. But uh, um, it's a popular option for uh, for those who don't have pay on your accounts. Um, so I hope that answers your question, Fatma. Okay, great. Any other questions? Okay, let's. Okay, see. I had another question that. Um... So Instagram and Facebook already give us insights about our content. So how can we use what is basically HubSpot and Google Analytics used for when it comes to content? Right. So uh, Google Analytics is a marketing tool that uh, gives you data, right? Uh, data on the different uh, metrics, marketing metrics, right? Um, and these metrics are usually uh, associated with your website uh, and uh, different web pages on your website, including your blog, right? So uh, Google Analytics essentially provides you with insights or it provides you with data analytics um, to tell you whether your, your marketing efforts are working or not, right? Um, and um, the second, um, second one um, was, sorry, um, one was Google Analytics. What was the other one? HubSpot. HubSpot, right? So HubSpot is is a is a content is is a marketing uh, marketing tool or um, uh, that 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 offers you know a range of marketing services. So it's essentially a marketing suite, right? It's a SaaS company. HubSpot is a SaaS company. Software is a service company, and uh, they have. Uh, an academy or an online learning platform called HubSpot Academy, right? Where they have courses and certifications that they offer. Most of them are free. Um, and, and they also have a blog, right? Where they publish a, a lot of articles related to content marketing. Um, so uh, yeah, I hope that answers your question. Yes, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, I actually had one more question just regarding the uh, Google Analytics. Basically, yeah. do you think that it helps us like, um, you know, find out or helps us measure um, our contents, you know, that's having an influence on our sales and revenue as well? Yes. Yeah, so, so for example, if let's say you're doing content marketing for, if you've published an article uh, with a call to action that says book a demo, right? And you have a link to... Um, on your website where um, with a calendar, right? Built-in calendar, that embedded calendar where, where, you're, where people can go and book demos uh, or schedule calls with you, right? So, so you want to, you can see how much traffic um, has been routed uh, to, to that, 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 that page, that web page, okay? Uh, but uh, what it is hard to tell, it's hard to tell um, whether, how much profit you're generating from a single article that it's hard to tell what um, yeah that 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 is that involves some guesswork but uh, what you can gauge from google analytics is how much uh, uh, how much traffic you uh, um, you're, you're attracting to a single blog post or a web page or your your homepage or your your entire website um, 
that that you can uh, gauge and you can also gauge um, how many people have viewed or how how lo long on average your audience has viewed a certain page that you've promoted it could be a blog post or it could be a web page um, on your website yeah right thank you you're welcome um aban mohammed aban has a question he's raised his hand yes aban uh, hello everyone this is aban from i i just have um aban your voice is cracking could you please put your question in the chat okay sir thank you yeah me hai i have a question um uh, i am sidra from uh, dubai i have a question about that uh, that how uh, how can we uh, we um, uh, compete uh, or how can we step up uh, the battle of competitors uh, like uh, how do we stack up against competitors as, as we know that competitors uh, uh, analysis is the key to staying ahead so how do we uh, step up against these competitors right so let's say that if if you're a content marketer and are you talking about um uh, com competitors as in other content marketers or are you talking about from a brand's perspective uh, yeah, other, other, brand? yeah obviously other content marketers right so how do you step up your game is that's your question right yes so, yes okay right so so again if if you um um so if you recall the the uh, tips to kick start your your career that's one way you can do it um uh, and uh, other than that you want to make sure that 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 uh, you connect with uh, clients you can you, you can use your uh, your fiverr and upwork profiles create those profiles and become visible to clients outside pakistan as well um and take up even even locally you know get people from your network to to order through your your fiverr upwork profiles right um or if you're using your link star which i would encourage you to do um then uh, you want to make sure that your link star is published uh, on on all your socials okay and Uh, keep keep reaching out to or looking for opportunities right so linkedin um, on linkedin jobs you will find uh, freelance content marketing jobs posted there you want to connect with different startup founders you will be informed on on um, on opportunities right so so you want to be very quick to seize the opportunities okay um and, and also um, get feedback right um if you want to step up your game get feedback on your work from let's say you know a, a mentor or uh, even your clients will give you feedback so so that will help you get better at your job right yeah right i got it thank you you're welcome um right so we have more questions in the chat how will we get to know what our competitors are at or where our competitors are at right so um this is ali right so ali could you rephrase your question um do you mean to say how will we get to know uh, where our who our, our competitors clients are or uh, are you talking about um you know, in what way okay aban has a question how can a luxurious brand a store serving original and branded accessories watches scales and create awareness um to potential customer base um right so there are different ways to do this um one way is through running ads right uh, and then content marketing ka chatak sawal hai you can you can leverage on um having your brand uh, 
the brand uh, uh, featured so so the business the business featured in uh, in articles on popular um, popular digital magazines like brand scenario uh, and a few others propaganda is another one um, mango bars etc uh, you can reach out to these and and maybe even lifestyle uh, lifestyle um, uh, blogs, you can reach out to them and ask them to feature your brand in, um, in, in their articles because they have big audience, audiences. You can get, um, uh, uh, you can write the, the articles for them if they, they're okay with that and uh, you can get uh, visibility, uh, get in front of your target audience, a, a large audience that way. Um, um, and you can even have your own lifestyle blog. Let's say if you're selling uh, watches, etc., you can even launch your own blog and, and write about topics related to your uh, to your uh, niche and publish those articles on all your socials. So make sure that you're publishing on your page um, and your page is being promoted through ads so that you have more and more followers. Uh, your followers keep growing, right? Um, so that, that that's how you grow your brand awareness. And yeah. Um, how will we, Ali, how will we get to know what our competitors are at the fellow content marketers? Okay, uh, Ali, I, I don't quite understand what your question is. Um, could you rephrase it, please? Right there, uh, let's see if there are any other questions. Huzema, Huzema has a question. Thank you, Huzema, for appreciating the session. Um, international startups focus heavily on con content marketing, but local startups are missing out on this. Why is that? How can startups incorporate this and how can they start? Right, so that's a very, very good valid point. So local in, in, in the local, uh, so when in local startups, um, that's it's true that many of them, you know, um, don't focus too much on content marketing. And one of the biggest reasons for that is that uh, they have very small teams and they want to prioritize um, uh, certain, certain things over content marketing, right? Another is budget because content marketing can be expensive. A lot of them cannot afford it because they don't have the budget for it. And another reason is that it's very hard to find um, a solid qualified content marketers in Pakistan. Um, there are very few out there. So uh, that's an opportunity for you to, to qualify by doing courses, right? Doing courses and getting certified so that you, you become, um, become um, um, a, a prospective talent for, for these companies, right? Um, so I hope that answers your question, Kozema. Uh, okay. Okay, um, Ali's question, how we will get to know what our competitors are at the fellow content marketers? Um, where they are at, um, in terms of uh, content, right? So, one once you connect with fellow content marketers, you can you'll get to know which brands they're working with, right? Connect with them on LinkedIn. I'm sure they'll be open to having you in their networks, um, uh, and uh, maybe some of them even have portfolios, right? So. Um, or maybe they've uh, published their work on their own uh, link stars or their personal websites. So you can see, you know, which, which brands they've worked with and what kind of content they're publishing. Um, so a lot of these content marketers, freelance ones will also publish articles for their clients on their own LinkedIn pages. Uh, so you can, you can connect with them on LinkedIn and, and see from there. Um, or you can even reach out to them and, and uh, ask them which brands they're working with, right? I'm sure they'll be open to answering your question. 
right? What distinguishes a content marketing from digital marketing? So digital marketing includes um, organic and paid content uh, in general, right? So you have advertising, that's performance marketing. You have social media marketing, email marketing, content marketing. So content marketing is a, 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 a um, it's a, a branch of digital marketing, right? And content marketing is organic, right? It's not paid, right? Um, okay, um, Mohammed Aban. Right, so um, Lifestyle and My Venture Times Square are, have the same products and we have uh, 40 the same product and 40% less price with original company packaging. So uh, publish articles, uh, uh, publish articles, publish social media posts uh, where you promote this, uh, your unique selling points, right? You need to publish. Uh, so, so if you don't want to launch a blog right now, you can, um, you can, you should be posting on your social media pages and advertising your, your products also, right? Through uh, Facebook and Instagram ads, right? That's beyond the scope of today's session, but, but once you, when you're advertising, you're acquiring more and more customers, um, right? Uh, so, so depending on how much you're spending, um, how much your ad spend is, right? So, so you want to make sure that you you're constantly promoting this uh, your unique selling point that you're offering up to 45% uh, cheaper pricing, right? Prices, right? So, so your unique USPs need to be defined and you, those need to be promoted through your social media content, through your email marketing content, and then also if you're planning to if you want to launch a blog, then then do it on your blog. Um, it should be up on your website also, uh, uh, somewhere on your homepage, right? Uh, your, your USPs need to be defined that, hey, you know, we're offering uh, cheaper prices than other, com other competitor, other sellers in the market. So, so all these, this information needs to be clearly visible to your audience the first time they, they connect with you, right? Okay, thank you so much, Meher. I guess that is enough questions. Um, yeah. Thank you so much, guys, for being so interactive. And thank you so much, Meher, for such a great session. It was absolutely lovely having you. Thank you so much, Namra. I really appreciate the opportunity. Um, I'm very happy to, to, to participate today. So guys, I will be leaving the feedback um, form in the comments. Make sure you guys fill it before you leave. Thank you so much for attending. It was really nice having you all. All the best, everyone. And feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. You're most welcome, everyone. Uh, we'll appreciate the feedback, Namra. Uh, if, uh, if we could connect later on uh, uh, for a feedback exchange, that would be great. Definitely. Thank you so much, guys.